Chapter 6 I want something in a cage. Page number 36 Some points to be pondered. 1. Mr. Purcell owns a pet shop. 2. There is a constant noise of screeching and twittering in the shop. But Mr. Purcell is happily unaware of it. 3. One cold morning, a strange customer calls. Now, the text. Mr. Purcell did not believe in ghosts. Nevertheless, the man who bought the two doves and his strange act immediately thereafter left him with a distinct sense of the uncanny. As though behind his departed customer there had lingered a musty smell of an abandoned haunted house. Mr. Purcell was a small fussy man, red cheeks and a tight melon stomach. Large glasses magnified his eyes so as to give him the appearance of a wise and genial owl. He owned a pet shop. He sold cats and dogs and monkeys. He dealt in fish food and bird seed, prescribed remedies for ailing canaries and displayed on his shelf long rows of ornate and gilded cages. He considered himself something of a professional man. A constant steer of movement pervaded his shop, whispered tweeters, sly rustlings, squeals, sheeps, and sudden squeaks. Small feet scramped in frantic circles, frightened, bewildered, blindly seeking. Now here are some words. Uncanny means unusual. Magnified means made to appear big. Canary means a small bright yellow bird noted for its singing. Page number 37 now the text. Across the shelves pushed this endless flicker of life. But the customers who came in said, Aren't they cute? Look at that little cage. They are sweet. And Mr. Purcell himself would smile and briskly rub his hands and emphatically shake his head. Each morning when the routine of opening his shop was completed, it was the proprietor's custom to perch on a high stool behind the counter, unfold his morning paper and digest the day's news. As he read, he would smirk, frown, reflectively purse his lips, knowingly lift his eyebrows, nod in grave agreement. He read everything, even advice to the love lawn and the detailed columns of the advertisements. It was a rough day. A strong wind blew against the high plate glass windows. Smog filmed the wintry city and the air was grey with a thick frost. Now some word. Perch means sit. Digest means read and understand fully. Page number 38 Having completed his usual tasks, Mr. Purcell again mounted on high stool and unfolded his morning paper. He adjusted his glasses and glanced at the day's headlines. Chirping and squeaking and mewing vibrated all around him, yet Mr. Purcell heard it no more than it would have heard the monotonous ticking of a familiar clock. There was a bell over the door that jingled whenever a customer entered. This morning, however, for the first time, Mr. Purcell would recall it failed to ring. Simply he glanced up and there was the stranger, standing just inside the door as if he had materialized out of thin air. The storekeeper slid off his stool. From the first instant he knew instinctively, unreasonably, 
that the man hated him, but out of habit he rubbed his hands briskly together, smiled and nodded. Good morning. He beamed. What can I do for you? Comprehension check. 1. Write true or false against each of following statements. 1. Mr. Purcell sold birds, cats, dogs and monkeys. Blank. 2. He was very concerned about the well-being of the birds and animals in his shop. Blank. 3. He was impressed by the customer who bought the two doves. Blank. 4. He was a successful shopkeeper, though insensitive and cold as a person. Blank. 2. Why is Mr. Purcell compared to an owl? 3. From the third paragraph, pick out 1. Words associated with cries of birds 2. Words associated with noise 3. Words suggestive of confusion and fear Page number 39 4. Mr. Purcell heard it no more than he would have heard the monotonous tickling of a familiar clock. Within bracket, read para beginning with It was a rough day. Bracket closed. 1. What does it refer to? 2. Why does Mr. Purcell not hear it? Clearly. Some points to ponder. 1. The customer wants something that has wings. 2. He spends his 10 years earning on a pair of birds. 3. What he does after buying the birds is the strangest act Mr. Purcell had ever seen. Now the text. The man's shiny shoes squeaked forward. His suit was cheap, ill-fitting but obviously new. He had a startling glance and close cropped hair. Ignoring Purcells for the moment, he rolled his gaze around the shadowy shop. A nasty morning, volunteered the shopkeeper. He clasped both hands across his melon-like stomach and smiled importantly. I see by the paper we are in for a cold spell. Now, what was it you wanted? The man stared closely at Mr. Purcell as though just now aware of his presence. He said, I want something in a cage. Something in a cage? Mr. Purcell was a bit confused. You mean some sort of pet? I mean what I said, snapped the man. Something in a cage. Something that is small. I see, hastened the storekeeper, not at all certain that he did. His eyes narrowed gravely and he pursed his lips. Now, let me think, a white rat perhaps? I have some very nice white rats. No, said the man, not rats. Something with wings. Something that flies. A bird? Exclaimed Mr. Purcell. Here are some words. Shuttling glance. Constantly looking to and fro. Snapped. Said angrily. Page number 40. Now the text. A bird's all right, the customer pointed suddenly to a suspended cage which contained two snowy birds. Doves, how much for those? 550 came the prompt answer and a very reasonable price. They are a fine pair. 550? The man was obviously crestfallen. He hesitantly produced a $5 bill. I would like to have these birds, but uh, this is all I have got. Just five dollars. Mentally, Mr. Purcell made a quick calculation, which told him that 
at a 50 cent reduction, he could still reap a tidy profit. He smiled magnanimously. My dear man, if you want them that badly, you can certainly have them for five dollars. I will take them. He laid his five dollars on the counter. Mr. Purcell tottered on tiptoe, unhooked the cage, and handed it to his customer. The man cocked his head to one side. Listening to the constant chittering, the rushing scurry of the shop. That noise? He blurred. Doesn't it get you? Noise? What noise? Mr. Purcell looked surprised. He could hear nothing unusual. The customer glared. I mean, all this cage stuff drives you crazy, doesn't it? Mr. Purcell drew back. Either the man was insane or drunk. He said hastily, Yes, yes, certainly, I guess so. Listen, the staring eyes came closer. How long would you think it took me to make the five dollars? The merchant wanted to order him out of the shop. But oddly enough, he couldn't. He heard himself dutifully asking, Why? Why how long did it take you? The other laughed. Ten years. At hard labor. Ten years to earn five dollars. Fifty cents a year. It was best. Purcell decided to humor him. My, my ten years. That's certainly a long time now. Some words are here. Snowy means white. Crestfallen means disappointed. Magnanimously means generously. He smiled a broad smile. Tottered means moved unsteadily. Page number 41. Now the text begins. They give you five dollars, laughed the man, and a cheap suit, and tell you not to get caught again. Mr. Purcell mopped his sweating bro. Now about the care and feeding of your doves, I would uh, advise. Bah! The man swung around and stalked abruptly from the store. Purcell sighed with sudden relief. He waddled to the window and stared out. Just outside, his peculiar customer had halted. He was holding a cage soldier high, staring at his purchase. Then opening the cage, he reached inside and drew out one of the doves. He tossed it into the air. He drew out the second and tossed it after the first. They rose like wind-blown balls of the fluff and were lost in the smoky grey of the wintry city. For an instant, the liberator's silent and lifted gauge watched after them. Then he dropped the cage. He shoved both hands deep in his trouser pocket, hunched down his head and shuffled away. Page number 42 The merchant's bro was puckered with perplexity. So desperately had the man desired the dubs that he had let him have them at a reduced price. And immediately he had turned them loose. Now, why? Mr. Purcell muttered. Did he do that? He felt vaguely insulted. The story by L. E. Grieve Comprehension Check 1. Do you think the atmosphere of Mr. Purcell's shop was cheerful or depressing? Give reasons for your answer. 2. Describe the stranger who came to the pet shop. What did he want? 3. 1. The man insisted on buying the doves because he was fond of birds. Do you agree? 2. How had he earned the five dollars he had? 4. Was the customer interested in the care of feeding of the doves he had bought? If not, why not? Exercise. Discuss the following topics in groups. 1. 
Why, in your opinion, did the man set the doves free? Two, why did it make Mr. Purcell feel vaguely insulted?